Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is iOS 9. iOS 9 is now available to the public and brings quite a few updates, not probably as many as iOS 8 did, but it brings a lot of refinements and stability improvements along with some other changes as well. Now, if you don't have this already, it's available for the iPhone 4S and newer and all iPads except the original iPad. So quite a few devices, uh, the older devices just can't handle all the graphics and things and maybe all of the different updates. But basically it goes back that far, which is pretty good for uh, devices that are three, three or four years old. So now in order to get that update, what you need to do is go into your settings, find general, and then go to software update if you don't have it already. You can see it says iOS 9.0, your software is up to date. So it's installed, I'm ready to go, but if you don't have it, it's gonna be here. And one of the changes they've brought with this is smaller downloads. So for those of you with 16 gigabyte iPhones that can't install this, and maybe some of the older ones with eight gigabyte iPhones, hopefully you'll be able to install this and then the following updates easily. So one of the changes they've made to this operating system or this version is actually a new app called News. Now News kind of replaces the newsstand app that we had before. And there's the News app. Let's go back into it. There's the News app. We'll open News. And you can see here's Zolotech. I need to make some changes to it, but this is the Zolotech News Feed within Apple News. So what it does is if I go to For You, we've got a bunch of different things it thinks I may want to read. And here's just a bunch of different news stories. We also have favorites and in favorites, uh, I selected myself, but basically we have some things that preloads in here. So I'll go back into mine and then say, maybe we want to look at the one plus two review, scroll down and we can read the full story over at the website that it comes from. So it's a nice little news reader that Apple's come out with. We can also explore search and have some saved information as well. So that comes free. You can't delete it at this time. So that may annoy some of you, but it's, it's here and it's really, it's pretty nice. I find that I didn't use it too much during the beta though. They've also added wallet. Now wallet pretty much takes the place of passbook. If we go into wallet, You'll see we have a few different things. Uh, I had a Fandango ticket that I went on June 19th. We also have Starbucks and whatever else you want to add into here. So it's really nice there and gives you some coupons and things. So you can also have Apple Pay and your different debit or credit cards in there as well. So that's really nice. It just stores all that information and it's in there. Apple has updated maps with transit information. It's also updated it with nearby search. So one of those things is actually an update to Siri too, where Siri is now proactive. So if I slide to the right, this is our Siri suggestions. And you can see for maps, we've got maps, but we also have nearby restaurants, bars, convenience, and nightlife. And that integrates with maps. So things are a little bit tightly or more tightly integrated at this point. And you can search between these different locations and it will show you those suggestions. Now, the other thing Siri does that they've updated is it, it's become more of a proactive assistant. So it's really kind of like Google now in the sense that it, it will look at your calendar, look at the different things you might have planned. If you put in the directions or the location of those events within your calendar, Siri will tell you in the notification center uh, where that location is, what time you need to leave for it based on your current location. But unlike Google now, it doesn't go out to Apple servers to gather that information and them store it. It's actually stored locally on your phone. So it's a little more secure that way. So instead of going out to Apple and asking every time you want to go somewhere, it actually does it right on the phone and just tells you what you need to know. Siri is also capable of more things such as asking it, show me a photo from two weeks ago. It will pop up a photo from two weeks ago. You can also tell it to according to Apple, remind me about this when I get in the car. So you could say, remind me to pick up groceries when I get in the car and it will pop up once you're in your car. It just kind of knows where things are based on your current pattern of where you're going and what you're doing. All of this is able to be disabled. If you don't want any of that, you can turn it all off. And that's really a nice feature that they've given you that option. The other app that Apple has created and put in here is something we've wanted for a long time, iCloud Drive. iCloud Drive allows you to get access to your different files. You can see here's my iCloud Drive files. I've got text edit, Galaxy Note 4, uh, different notes that I've taken, uh, Pixelmator files for my graphics, all the things that save to iCloud, a lot of them you can, or most of them, you can actually access here now. So 
for example, we go into Keynote, here's some things with my logo on it, and you can go in there and access those and either edit them right from here, you can go on your Mac and take a look at them there, or even a Windows computer and look at them there and pull them out and take a look at it. They've also changed multitasking, so if I double click the home button, multitasking looks a little bit different. If we wanna close something, we simply swipe it up and out of the way. We swipe up again and we can close that. We also have a new notes update Within the Notes app, Apple's own Notes app, we can scribble. You can see I wrote the word hi. We can do more of that. Hello. We'll hit done. And we've got a little scribble there. We can add photos. Uh, we can add task lists. We can add all sorts of things. And it's really nice and it's been updated. And I think that's mostly for the iPad Pro when that comes out so that you have a little more capable noting app. And this syncs across the iCloud and everything as well. As far as the iPad goes, they've updated this significantly as well, at least made some pretty significant changes I think are pretty useful. So here we have the iPad Air 2. Now, some of these changes only apply to the iPad Air 2, the iPad Mini 4 that just came out, and the iPad Pro, which isn't out yet or might be at the time you're viewing this. One of those changes is multitasking. So if we go into Safari, we open that up, and you can see here's my website. What I can do is pull in from the side. Now most of the iPads should have this option available. So this is the Notes app. If I pull down, you'll see I can get access to different apps as well. So if I wanna go into the clock, I can go into the clock. There's an alarm I have set for, well I don't have it set, but it's set up for 6.45 a.m. Now if I wanna see both of these apps at the same time and access them, I simply hold in the middle and do that. Now that's the part that's only available on three iPads. So you can slide, you can make this bigger or smaller, you can use both, and they both work independently of one another and we can make them bigger or smaller depending on what we wanna do. Then we just swipe them off the screen. So that's a nice little addition and that will come to more and more apps as the actual software gets updated. One of the other nice changes is picture in picture video. So if I go into videos and then I play a video and I can't play it for copyright reasons, but I'll show you what happens after you hit the home button once you play the video. Now I've got the video shrunk in the bottom right, so I can move this, I can expand it, I can move it around, and I can actually multitask and have the video running at the same time. So that's really nice as well. So I can blow it up, I can shrink it, and I can close out of it. So that's another option that they've updated the iPad with. That's pretty much it as far as the iPad goes, but there is one more thing that they actually added. If you go to the keyboard, you put two fingers down, you can actually look at the cursor up here, you can actually get a little more fine adjustment of the cursor, select and highlight everything. It's just a little bit easier to do, two fingers down. Doesn't work on the iPhone. It may work on the 6S and the 6S Plus, but I haven't tried it at this point, so I'm not really sure. One of the big additional changes they've made is to the font. The font on everything is a new font called San Francisco. You may notice that when you're in the, your iPhone, things might appear a little bit larger or easier to read, and that was on purpose. Apple designed a whole new font for the iPhone, so that's a nice little addition I had to get used to, but it's really nice now that I have gotten used to it. There are a lot of behind the scenes changes with some updates to the software, the programming behind the scenes, some optimizations where graphics and everything else can run a lot faster using their new interface or their new framework rather called Metal. Metal really speeds things up for a lot of different graphics and this will really play a part coming forward on Mac and iPad and iPhone and you'll see it everywhere and it really speeds everything up. Now the other thing they've done is make battery life better. They claim that every iPhone and iPad that gets this update should have an hour battery life more. If we go into settings, there's a new battery icon and they've changed some of the information. So you can see it says battery percentage, last four hours, and here's my percentages. You can scroll all the way down for your usage, but since this has just recently been updated, it's gotta really cycle through everything. We also can see a history and timeline, 18 minutes on the screen. It gives you detailed information of what's really using your battery. You've also got a new low power mode that extends the battery to about three hours, but it shuts off a lot of different things, so you may not get all the notifications and emails that you're used to but it should save you and you should be able to text or make phone calls during that time and that should help you at least have your phone when you need it that's pretty much it as far as most things people will notice on ios 9 the real question is should you update well for me 
it's been plenty fast. Some people do see it hiccup from time to time. I really haven't had an issue. I find it a joy to use. And most of the time it's really, really good. Just as good as iOS 8, if not better, I definitely get better battery life out of it. And it's really nice to use. So I'd like to hear what you think about iOS 9. If you're seeing this after you've used it for a while, let us know what you think about it in the comments below. There'll be updates to come. I'm sure iOS 9.1, all sorts of different changes as well. So let us know what you think in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and like the video. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.